Welcome to a Nonsense Wars train thing on my Pullman 72-foot baggage car. A new piece of rolling stock and the third in my more modern passenger set. I referenced a Northern Pacific design that made its way into Amtrak, but it broadly represents this kind of car from this time period. I would have preferred to build a Pennsylvania design, but the PRR apparently didn't build many, if any, lightweight steel baggage cars. I decided to rebuild my passenger fleet in order to cover more space and time. The cars I built earlier the P-54 set, the R-50B, and even the Canadian Pacific business car all derived from very specific prototypes built toward the beginning of the 20th century. But I have many locomotives from different lines from much later. The cars I made more recently, uh, including this one, derive from later prototypes that represent a wider range of designs. I didn't number them for any actual railways either. They still aren't necessarily prototypical for something like a Simmons Charger, but they are much closer in age and appearance to cars that could be. I even modified the P85s in response to this build. I had felt for some time that they needed an extra plate of height above the windows, and I finally added it to match the height of the Pullman. Furthermore, I removed a plate from the bogey frames the old design hung too low and could scrape the top of 9-volt track connectors. In the process, I also reinforced the supporting structure based on a revised implementation for the baggage car. As with the passenger cars, I tried to optimize this model for weight. Building the body almost entirely studs up with 1x2x2 and 1x4x2 panels. These parts have less weight compared to the same area of brick and they have a nice texture, at least in LDD and Studio. I did do a bit of snot with a relatively new bracket for the handles around the doors Unfortunately, the too wide part quite obviously protrudes into the internal space. For most other models, I would not consider this an issue, but I wanted to make the doors removable to suggest an open state. Lifting an internal hinge unlocks each pair of slightly recessed doors which can subsequently slide out toward the larger side. This works as the car has a rotationally symmetric door configuration with large and small ones across from each other. Perhaps some internal greebling can cover up those brackets. Some roof sections do come off to access the empty interior. The center section covers the aforementioned hinges. The sections that do not come off provide structural integrity for the door frames below them. Like the P85 roofs, this roof requires tons of 2x3 curved slopes as the 1x2 bow does not fit and no longer comes in four wide variants. This makes the roof pretty
pretty heavy. A P85 roof makes up a quarter of its 740 gram weight. While the Pullman baggage weighs less than a P85 at 580 grams, I designed it to use bearing wheels from the beginning, though it can obviously use Technic wheels as well. As I said in the bearing wheel video, individual cars don't really need them, but they really help with more bigger cars and with smaller, weaker locomotives. Even larger, heavier locomotives will benefit from less load. This model does work across all R40 geometry, since most passenger cars don't have skirts that limit truck rotation, etc. Nonetheless, the separation between cars in straights remains small thanks to the protruding bellows at the ends. Finally, I have instructions available on Rebrickable for those interested, and please consider subscribing if you like what we do. On that note, this is the end of the video, so have a nice day.